My name is Seth Chrisman, and I'm a master's student and research assistant in Dr. Ashley Conway's lab. We're doing research on silvopasture. I started in the program last August, and I've been primarily working on an elderberry fodder project, which Dr. Conway will go over in her presentation. But my thesis project will be exploring ecosystem functions during establishment of woodland silvopasture. This project is part of a three-year North Central SARE grant that Dr. Conway received. It has multiple objectives, including economic and social dimensions of woodland silvopasture adoption, but my project will be focused on the ecological component of these systems. And for this component, the key personnel are Dr. Conway and Dr. Dusty Walter, who is the superintendent at WordAct Research Center, where the study will take place. Some background on the project, silvopasture management can provide ecosystem services, such as soil carbon sequestration, beneficial nutrient cycling, and improved wildlife habitats and water quality. However, most existing literature on the subject pertains to planting trees into pasture. Missouri ranks among the highest in the Midwestern U.S. for cow herd inventory. It's 35% forested, and census data suggests that the majority of farmers who raise cattle on more than 10 acres who graze their livestock in woodlands when available. So there's significant opportunity for converting unmanaged woodlands to civil pasture with selective thinning, invasive species management, and understory development, potentially improving ecosystem functions. As unmanaged grazing in woodlands has detrimental ecosystem impacts, all woodland grazing has generally been discouraged by forest advisors, and limited data exists on the ecosystem impacts of converting unmanaged woodlands to intensively managed civil pasture. So this project will begin the development of a long-term study site at Wordak Research Center in the northeastern Ozarks, where about 85 acres of minimally managed upland oak hickory forest have been identified for civil pasture conversion. The objectives of this study will be to establish baseline ecosystem data prior to any management and to evaluate the short-term and long-term ecosystem impacts of civil pasture conversion. Data collection will include plant community profile and abundance with a focus on invasive species and hardwood trees, soil health metrics, and forage quality and biomass. So paddocks for woodland silva pasture conversion and control areas where no management will occur are currently being mapped and will take place in the stands noted with SP in this map. After the treatments are mapped, baseline data on tree species and abundance will be collected this winter and baseline understory and herbaceous species in abundance and soil data will be collected this summer. Thinning of silva pasture treatments and seeding of warm season grasses will occur this fall, and seeding of cool season grasses and legumes will occur next spring. Plant community profile and soil data collection will be repeated throughout next year to monitor impacts with additional forage sampling and analysis to determine when cattle can be integrated. Thanks for your attention. Hi everyone, my name is Amanda Jo Schreiber. I am a third year master's student under Dr. Harley Nauman, and I'm here to update everyone on my project located out at HARC, which focuses on the establishment of native plant species for livestock forage in silvopasture systems. There are two primary objectives to this project. The first is determining the success of the establishment of 23 different native plant species, which include cool and warm season grasses, forbs, and legumes underneath two different silvopasture systems, a black walnut and a pitch loblolly pine, compared to an open pasture control. The second objective will look at how the differences in environmental factors underneath these two types of tree canopies and in the open pasture control affect the establishment of the different native plant species in terms of community composition and along with how the environmental factors can affect their quality as a livestock forage. We finished data collection for year one this past fall we collected uh, environmental data using uh, the hobo logging system. We had PAR, soil moisture, and ambient temperature sensor sensors that we rotated through the different treatments. We also collected stand counts and community composition um, at varying distances from the tree row. We collected at one, three, and five meters to see if there was any variation in the tree canopy that had an effect on the community composition as you moved closer towards the center of the alley. So now we are in the process of sorting and organizing the 
about eight months worth of sensor data as well as the stand count data. So tables and figures for this are still a work in progress. But last fall, we were also able to start our year two prep work thanks to Cliff. Uh, he drilled our cool season grasses last September and we will be getting the warm season grasses, forbs and legumes frost seeded shortly. So I'm looking forward to what year two has to offer and thank you all for listening.